Hi there, welcome back to the channel and to something a little bit different today. This is not going to be a video about the Enyaq itself. It's going to be about an accessory which I've been using for about the last year or so and which has now been updated to a new version. If you ever wanted to watch YouTube or Netflix in your car like Tesla owners can, then stay tuned. <music> So when people get a car with a big screen like the Enyaq, quite often they ask, can I watch movies on it in the way that I've seen Tesla owners doing? Natively, the car can only play, at least the Enyaq can only play movies from a stored memory device, like a memory stick or a USB hard drive. But if you buy an add-on device, such as the one I'm about to tell you about, you can stream content very much in the way that Tesla owners do. So for the past year, I've been using this device, which is a Tech Wizard Android multimedia box. So what this does is it allows you to install apps on it. It's like a mobile phone in effect and you plug it in and it then will display on the car screen. Now, I think in the case of this one, you have to have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay available on the car. If you don't have those, you need to look for another kind of device. If you've got a BMW, there's a separate version of the Tech Wizard which will work for those cars. So if you're going to buy one, be very careful that you buy one that's appropriate for your car. I've been really happy with this device. It's been brilliant. I've been able to use uh, YouTube. I've been able to use Netflix, Disney Plus, BBC iPlayer and so on. But it's uh, now been updated and I've just got hold of the latest version and it just steps up a little bit. So this is the latest version and it comes in this nice little box and you open it up like so. And inside you can see the box is superficially much the same as the previous version, but it does just say on the front Android 13 Pro. Now if I look at the, um, the packaging, it says it's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 processor. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of ROM. So it's a, a much faster processor than the one that was in it before. And that certainly shows up when you use it on screen. In the box, you get um, cables for uh, both USB-A and USB-C, depending on what your car has. And other differences um, are that this one has got a slot for a memory card on it. And instead of an HDMI port, it's got an HDMI mini port. And it's also got a SIM card slot. So in the one I've got, at, or one I've had previously, I've been having to use a hotspot on my phone. I'll probably continue to do that. But in this one, if you did want to install a separate SIM card, then the box can have its own mobile signal. Connecting up is nice and easy. You simply get your USB-C lead. This is the one that is provided with the box. Plug it into the USB-C socket and that's it. It will power from the car. And as you can see, as a little green light comes on there as it boots up. Now, in terms of booting up on the screen, as you can see, it's got its own logo. It's taken over what would normally be the Android Auto slot on my car. You may have CarPlay. So the first thing to do is set up either a hotspot or if you've got a Wi-Fi network nearby, use that. Or, of course, you can use a SIM card in the device itself. Go into settings. Go to Wi-Fi. Networks that are available. Oh, it's connected to my Pixel 6 already. That's fine. Good. And then the way you control the entire device is there's a little button here which controls a floating menu. You bring that up and obviously you've got um, different, that, that lets you see all the different apps that are running. Um, I think that's for voice commands. You can look at file manager, you can delete things or you can go back to the car's own screen. And obviously if I flick through, there are lots of different apps running already. These are the ones I've had previously. So I've got WhatsApp, which is a good uh, route planning and uh, charge find, charger finder for finding EV charge points. Um, I've got an STV player, which is a TV player here for Scottish television. There is the um, uh, control menu. This is Google TV. Uh, I don't have a channel a subscription for Paramount Plus. I do have a subscription for. Disney Plus, so let's go into that one. I don't know what Strangers is. And as you can see, up comes the Disney Plus menu. And here we have Strangers. Apologies if you're a fan of the show, I don't know what it is. 
hit continue. Obviously I'm working off my home, off my mobile phone here so the signal isn't particularly fantastic where we are and the speed will obviously be faster if you're on a fast Wi-Fi network. And the sound as you can hear comes through the speakers of the car. So if you like it nice and loud, you turn it up or you can turn it back down. There are black borders around the side, it doesn't quite use the full screen but I suspect that's down more to the um, software in the ENIAC than anything else. So if I go back out to the home screen you can see um, here are all the different um, apps that I've got installed. Plex, VLC for playing locally stored video content, you've got your normal Google search engine, um, Freeview would allow me to watch um, free to air TV in the UK and this is a little game that I play occasionally on my phone and it's a, a well it's called Mini Metro it's a, a subway building a, an underground railway building uh, program or game and what you have to do is just build your railways and obviously as you can see the touch screen on the ENIAC is just like a giant uh, tablet or uh, mobile phone and that works really well there's no lag whatsoever. This device really is uh, excellent. So I mean, that's just a simple little game. Um, and you can exit that. That's exiting the actual game. I mean, if I actually wanted to exit the entire game, obviously I can press back to home. If I want to kill the apps I've got running, I can just hit clear all. And bingo, all the apps are cleared. Um, just a matter of uh, installing apps if you want. You can go into, where's it gone? The Google Play Store. Log in with your Google account and you've got the complete range of apps there that you would want. And obviously if I want to go back to the car, then you can just jump straight back out to the car's menus and then back into the uh, Android box. See from the interface here, it's really fast, really snappy, there's no lag whatsoever there. I don't use or haven't used so far the uh, Bluetooth phone, maps, messages, but you could use this basically in the same way that you would use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay to do all your normal phone type functions. You can also uh, set up uh, screen mirroring from your phone to your um, car screen. You can install CarBit Link here. This will come up and it'll ask me to download the app. I can go in, search for it in Google Play. So there's a, basically a menu pre-installed for that option. I don't personally see the point of mirroring the, uh, the mobile phone to the car screen because this device has got everything on it that I would actually want on my, or could have on my mobile phone. So there's no point in um, actually mirroring my phone to it. So it's a great device. I've only had this for a few weeks, but I had its predecessor for well over a year and really enjoyed using it. It's really handy if you find yourself waiting for, I don't know, relatives at airports or train stations, kids coming out of school clubs or sporting activities. And it just means you can do something other than scrolling through social media on your phone. It is in fact the third Android multimedia box I've used. The first one was pretty old and clunky. The Tech Wizard one was a marked improvement on that. And this latest version really is an improvement again. It's far more fluid and usable than the old one was. So in terms of cost, it's listed on their website as being $189.99, but Tech Wizard have very kindly offered me a referral code, which I can share with you, which gets you an extra £10 off. Obviously, I get a little referral bonus as well, and that all just helps towards the cost of buying cameras, microphones, and so on, that help me keep the channel going. So if you're in the market for one of these, it'd be great if you could use that link and save yourself some money. One other thing it's also worth mentioning is that quite often these boxes are sold on eBay and so on and you find that your, uh, your box quickly becomes out of date because there's no tech support. Um, I have actually had to use Tech Wizards tech support over the last year. There were a couple of apps when I think it was the Disney Plus app in particular just wasn't updating properly from the Play Store. Tech Wizard um, very quickly responded to my query sent me back a link which then enabled me to download the latest version of that app and made sure that I was kept up to date. So it's just reassuring to know that once you've bought a device like this, which is a reasonable amount of money after all, that there is some support there to back it up and, uh, and keep things running should you ever encounter any problems. 
touch wood though I've had no issues whatsoever with the actual hardware or the reliability of it either on the old device or in this latest newer version. I hope that video has been of some interest or some use. If you have enjoyed it please like and subscribe all the usual things on social media and I will see you in another video soon.